friends, Amanda here. Welcome back to Handmade Not Hallmark and another card in my In the Garden series for this year. This card is a completely die cut card with one small stamped greeting. I absolutely love this die from Honeybee. This is from their newest release and it is a wonderful one to work with. Super easy and I love the technique of ink smushing. It's one of my favorite ways to color in die cuts so let's get into it. Today I am using the newest Lovely Layers die from Honeybee. This is their tulip die. It is so fun and easy to work with. They have a wonderful graphic to help you on their website. And again, it is so fun to use. First thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get all of my ink smushing done. I have got some Canton XL watercolor paper here that I just have cut down into some manageable pieces. And I'm using a variety of distress oxide colors today because they're a little bit softer when you ink smush with them than the regular distress inks. So I'm going to speed up this process quite a bit here because there is a lot to it. I left it all in because I wanted to kind of chat through it a little bit. I'm using mowed lawn and twisted citron for the greens for my leaves today and what I wanted to do is I wanted to really build up the color and the layers. So I started out kind of small with my colors. I started with lots of light colors. The Twisted Citron really came through on this first um, go through and I'm drying my bases in between each layer set. This kind of helps you build up that color, kind of helps stop the movement of color and all of that. So in between I am wiping down my mat. I'm just using a tonic um, craft mat here to help with all of the ink smushing. Now again, this is one of my favorite ways to add color and to do color with Distress Oxides. Now again, you can use Distress oxide, Oxides, you can use the regular Distress inks, you could use pigment inks, any inks that you have. You could even use regular watercolor. I really love the ink squishing technique because it it's so kind of carefree and you never know what you're going to get. It turns out different every single time I do it and I love it. Next, I wanted to get the pinky color down for my florals. I'm using ripe persimmon and picked raspberry. I really love this ripe persimmon color because I feel like it's a very peachy orange and it works really, really well with pink colors and really well with yellow colors. So with the pinks, I feel like you get more of a peachy color and with yellows, I feel like you get more of an orangey color. So it just depends on what color you use it with and I think these two colors work beautifully together. Um, I just love the look of this, um, the different variations that you get with the whites because you can get tulips that have white streaks in them and multicolored tulips and tulips are some of my favorite um, spring flowers. I can't grow them, <laughs> however, uh, I struggle growing them. They always come up and then rabbits eat them or, you know, whatever. I get too much sun or something, so they never grow, but they are one of my favorite spring florals. For this other sheet for my uh, my floral buds, I went. I started out straight away with the ripe persimmon to get that really faint kind of peachy orange color, and I dried that, and then I went in with the picked raspberry and a mixture of the ripe persimmon. Again, just to get a little bit of variation between the two colors, I wanted to have lots of you know movement of color and you know however you want to say it I'm not really an artist I did take a lot of art in school but I am in no means an art teacher <laughs> I just go with what I like and what I think looks best again you could keep building up the layers until you get what works best for you or how you like it I liked it right here and I wanted to stop um, so I dried it and and it goes from there for the center of the flower I went in with some I think this is mustard seed and the ripe persimmon. Again, with the yellow, it looks more of an orangey color, which I really liked. I didn't do too many layers with this because I have such small die cuts for this, but I wanted to do the whole sheet in case I wanted to create more flowers. I already have some ink smushing ready to go. Once all of those panels were nice and dry, I used the dies and die cut all of my images, and then I can start assembling them. Again, these dies are so easy to work with. Honey Bee really gives you nice step-by-step -step guides on their website that you can use and again they're really easy if I can put them together anybody can put them together they're really kind of self-explanatory um, the 
the stems and the leaves are really, really easy. You know, just stack them on top of each other. And then the buds themselves, they kind of have like little areas that you can line up. Uh, again, I think that these are super easy. These are really creative, inventive ways to create dyes. And I really give props to Honey Bee because these things are super popular. And I love how you can mix all the different ones that they have together to create a really beautiful bouquet of flowers. I'm just using some liquid glue to attach all these down. Now I've seen a lot of people do um, dimension, you know, they add a lot of dimension with foam tape or anything like that. But I decided to use liquid glue because I'm going to kind of just pull the, the petals forward a little bit to kind of create that dimension without adding too much bulk. Now this card does have quite a bit of bulk at the end. Um, so I would probably send this one in a bubble mailer just to keep it protected as it travels through the mail. As we all know, sometimes things can get damaged in the mail if they're in just a regular envelope. I've had a few things um, get sent and the, the envelopes were damaged. So using a bubble mailer, especially with these more dimensional cards, is the best way to do it. Just going through and adding the petals on this secondary bud here. This one is not open up all the way, but it's it's fairly open here and I had it upside down at first, but I quickly flipped it around and I got it lined up. Again, there's little areas on here that you can line up to kind of help give you a guide on where to put the petals and where to line them up. And again, I love using the ink smushing with this because you get lots of variation in color. You don't get as much of the you know contrast or the shadow unless you used definitive different shades like if you use something really dark for the more background images and then use something more light for the foreground die cuts so that would be a way if you wanted to do something like that I really liked how they all look the same color I probably could have gone in with some ink blending and added a little bit of dimension but I wanted to keep it pretty simple I didn't want to have to pull out too many products but um I really like the way that these looked, especially this last one. I like how you can see some of the white from the cardstock a little bit, or I didn't get as much ink smushing on the particular piece, and it looks like it almost has the stripes that a regular tulip would have. Uh, I love the tulips that have the, the striations and the petals. I really think those are really pretty and unique. Um, again, I love all tulips. I love all flowers, but I really like the ones with the white striations and the different colors inside of them. And again, this one was super easy to line up. You kind of line up the bottom all across there and it goes together beautifully. I love how this looked. This last one, I had a little bit of trouble getting it in its, in its spot, but I got it in the end. And I'm gonna attach the stem the same way I did the others using a little bit of liquid glue and my tweezers just to help hold it in place until it dries completely. So it's a little bit easier to work with. I just love this dye, it's so fun. Okay, now that those are all together, it's time to add our gold accents. So as many of you know, if you've been watching this in the garden series, I have been adding gold accents to my cards, whether it's in a greeting or it's an ink splattering or it's any way I can find a way to add gold to this card or to this series. That's kind of my little go-to. And I'm coming back to my Art Philosophies metallic watercolor set here. And I'm using one of the golds in it. And I was very careful this time. So I didn't get any big globs on my project here. I tried not to kind of, I was very methodical and very careful <laughs> this time. So I didn't make any mistakes. Now I know I could fix it, but I'd rather just kind of be a little bit more careful this time. And I love the gold in this one. I really think it goes great with these pink colors and that you know the overall feel of the card very soft very springy and the gold i think just adds the perfect touch once i was happy with the amount of splatter i had on these i set them off to the side to dry and i worked on my greeting i'm using the thanks die from simon i'm not particularly sure on the name of this one but i'll make sure it's listed below but it is a thanks die from simon um, i really love the the really kind of detailed scripty font here and i'm using some gold shimmer cardstock again to add in that gold touch to this card and i backed it with some white cardstock i really like 
the idea of using like the shadow bubble with this and to add the dimension to this particular die cut I just took the shadow die and I die cut it three times from that heavy white cardstock and I'm stacking it on top of each other this helps give me that almost chipboard effect with my die I really like doing this with any of my larger um, die cut greetings if you've been following me for a while I really like doing this I think this adds a lot of dimension and it kind of helps it helps you give something a little more sturdy to something that's you know kind of detailed and delicate gonna add that same liquid glue to the back of my little scripty piece here and I really love the way that this turned out I was a little worried that the gold on this one would be a little bit too shiny but whenever you cut it from something really thin it's shiny but it's not too in your face shiny if that makes any sense <laughs> whatsoever um, it gives just enough shine to add interest to the card but it's not overwhelming and I apologize if my head gets in the way I was right over top of this to make sure that it got lined up perfectly that's one thing that kind of pet peeves me a little bit is whenever I don't get it lined up exact and it kind of kind of bugs me but that's just me being me perfection is overrated I need to be a little bit easier on myself next I took some craft card stock and I have it cut to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card panel and I have a scalloped rectangle die I think this is from a blueprints from MFT I think it's blueprints 29 but you could use any scalloped rectangle die there's a lot out there on the market this is just the one that I have and I use some honeybee um, pattern paper I think this is from their new modern release their modern spring release uh, this was a freebie in their um release this time they gave you some of their cardstocks which I think are beautiful and this pink was perfect for this one I love pink gingham it is super cute next I took some um, kind of twine that I had in my stash I don't know where this came from <laughs> I've had it forever and I used to use it for crafting and all sorts of things and I felt like it was the perfect addition to go with the craft add some nice texture to the card um, and some interest with like the it's very natural very frayed that sort of thing and I just wrapped it around and taped it at the back because this whole panel is going to go on top of a top folding card base so you won't see any of that in the background and I'm going to pop up the tulips with some uh, I think this is scrapbook adhesives this is their really thin um, square adhesives and I'm just lining it up behind the big petals and along the leaf here to add that dimension now again this is still kind of low dimension they're not very thick it still adds the dimension but it's not super super thick so I hope that makes sense probably doesn't I'm probably just rambling <laughs> but um, I love the dimension on these because it's not as thick as like a 3m foam tape which is a little bit thicker which I do use on the back of this panel to attach it to my card base but um, I think it's a great way to to add some dimension they're not too too thick go ahead and release that you know backing paper and we'll get this adhered and I ended up not using the one floral um, I used this big one and the smaller bud I kind of wish I would have used the other one but I like the way that this looked and I didn't want to overcrowd the card with too many things because I'm trying to kind of simplify some stuff um, I can always save that bud for another card I can use it in another way a little bit later and I also created a little bow here I end up taking it off and attaching it later just because I wanted to get my greeting on first before I, I committed to that bow so I went ahead and I took it off and I waited to add it until after I had my greeting adhered because I wanted my greeting to kind of come over that stem a little bit more so I'm adding some foam adhesive just a little bit to the T portion to help pop up that area and then I'm going to use some liquid glue to attach the rest just because there is some dimension there with the florals already and I wanted to make sure everything was nice and even so again going in with that liquid glue and adhering right over top of all of that dimension and that texture and it adhered just perfectly now I can kind of figure out where I want to add this little bow. I struggled getting it to adhere. Um, it took me a couple of tries to get it to really attach. Uh, I eventually got it in the end to stay and it is, it is secure. It's on there. It's not going anywhere now. 
Um, and while that's drying, I'm going to get my card base ready. I'm just using some Simon 120 pound cardstock. I have cut to a top folding A2 size card base. This is my preferred card bases for all of my cards. Um, I do every once in a while do side folding, but I think top folding um, sits nicer. So if somebody wanted to display it, they could. Um, I just think it's, it's just my per preference. You can do it however you like. Trimmed off that bow a little bit and I got it in the spot I wanted it and it still wasn't sticking. So I added a bit more adhesive and let it sit to dry a little bit more. I contemplated adding that last floor on the inside, but I felt like it would add too much bulk. So I left it off to the side. And next I took a greeting from the Thanks Buzzwords stamp set. Uh, this came out, uh, I'm not sure. It's a little bit old of a set, but I'll have it linked below. And I wanted to use uh, one of the greetings in there and some of this picked raspberry distress oxide ink. I really like using oxides to stamp with. They're a pigment sort of ink, so they stamp really nicely. So it says, you are the best. So it says, thanks, you are the best. So this is a nice card you can send to anybody for any occasion. And I added some foam tape to the back of my panel here, and I'm gonna get it adhered down. Now, my panel was a little bit bigger than my card base. And I didn't think about it until after I had it adhered. I could have trimmed it, but then if I trimmed it, all of my twine would come loose. So I just said, you know what, I'll leave it. It's, it's even all the way around. It's not, you know, crazy. So I just left it. Again, it's a handmade card. It's not going to be 100% perfect. All right, so it's okay. I left it be and we can move on. Next, I wanted to add some finishing details. So in the center of my little bow, I just took out a clay heart. I'm not 100% sure which ones these came from. There's a lot out there on the market. I'll have something similar linked below if you want to use something as well. I felt like that was a wonderful touch to the center of this card, and I really was pleased with that. And then I'm going in finally with some Nouveau drops in Simply White, again, to add a little bit of dimension and interest to the card. And that will finish up this card for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I love this die cut. So fun and easy to work with. And the accents of gold, I think, really round it out and make it a finished piece. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider hitting the subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos here at my YouTube channel. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye. screen I've got a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos on my YouTube channel.